Are you being asked for the Lewis structure of beryllium bromide, BEBr2? Well, it's not exactly a fair question. Beryllium is a metal and bromine is a nonmetal, so you probably think that the compound is ionic with a transfer of electrons from metal to nonmetal, which makes ions. But beryllium bromide is actually a covalent compound that shares electrons between the beryllium and bromine. I'm gonna draw this both ways and then you can decide which one you think your teacher wants. If we try for the ionic structure, we'll start with beryllium, which is in the second column of the periodic table and brings two valence electrons with it. One, two. Bromine is a halogen. It's in group 17 and brings seven valence electrons with it. Now, the way that these outer shells of electrons work is that most chemical or most atoms want a full outer shell of eight electrons. It's called the octet rule. So this beryllium might give away one electron to bromine. Bromine has a higher electronegativity anyways, but that beryllium still has one extra valence electron and this bromine now has a full eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven that it brought plus one from the bromine. How can we deal, or from the beryllium, how can we absorb another electron? The answer is to have another bromine atom with its seven valence electrons, and the beryllium gives its second electron to it. So that in the end, we have a beryllium atom with no electrons in what was its outer shell, and it lost two electrons, so it has a charge of positive two. We have two atoms of bromine, and they have eight valence electrons now, seven for the electrons they brought, and one extra. One of beryllium's electrons went here to be its eighth, and one of beryllium's electrons went here to become this bromine's eighth. I am showing that the bromines have absorbed one extra electron. Beryllium gave up two electrons. This is an ionic compound because the transfer of electrons caused negative charges on the nonmetals and positive charges on the metals. But turns out beryllium bromide has covalent bonds despite the electronegativity difference between the two. So what happens is much more like beryllium having its two valence electrons, like we said, and bromine existing with its seven valence electrons. Now I'm gonna draw both atoms right off the bat. And what ends up happening is this electron from bromine and this unpaired electron from beryllium pair up to make a bonding pair of electrons that is shared between the two atoms. The same thing happens with these two electrons. So bromine can pretend that it has eight valence electrons and that it satisfies the octet rule. The seven that it started with plus this one that beryllium is sharing with it. Same for this bromine, seven plus the one being shared with it. Beryllium can pretend that it has four electrons in its outer shell, and beryllium actually follows, like it's an exception to the octet rule where it's happy with just four in its outer shell. And so thusly, the Lewis structure, if you're going to draw this in a covalent way, is to have your beryllium covalently bonded to a bromine. That bromine had three lone pairs that weren't involved in the bonding. And beryllium covalently bonded to the other bromine, which also has three lone pairs of electrons. This is the ionic Lewis structure. This is the covalent Lewis structure. Now, just to make this even more complicated, the actual structure of beryllium bromide has these molecules stacked in such a way that the bromines from what would be one molecule are attracted to the beryllium's of another BEBr2 molecule. And these bonds end up being just as strong as these, so it's much more like a, a, a tetrahedral arrangement of bromines around each beryllium in, well, not an ionic lattice because they're not ionic bonds, so it ends up being called a polymer.
That's probably above your pay grade, though, if you're just learning how to draw Lewis structures. But hey, fun facts. Best of luck.